So the storm has come and gone, and today we assess the damage. So today's Saturday, um, on Thursday, I just had this feeling I was really burnt out and tired and despite that I was like I need to make tinctures and it's so interesting how our instincts work when it comes to this kind of thing um, so I really pushed hard that day and I mm, harvested a bunch of my herbs and just as I was processing and I'm trying to remember the last one that I worked with I think it was skullcap just as I was processing that the sky went this really really dark color and before we knew it, it opened up and just poured, poured rain. I can't remember, um, my husband just went in the garage, I'm gonna ask him, babe, how much rain did we get? Like in that 20 minute, 25 minute period. Yeah, we got 50 millimeters of rain in like a period of 20 minutes and massive hail just rained down and ripped through our property. There was high winds. Um, I do have, we have some video footage, so I'll share that. Uh, yesterday we were busy. We had other things already planned. So today is the day that we're heading out into the garden to see how things have done. Um, I'll give you a bit of a walkthrough. And yeah, you're just gonna come on this journey. And today's about cleanup. It's about figuring what crops will survive, um, which ones won't, and then our plan for that. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of the preparedness stuff that we had to do too. But first, I'll show you some of the video footage that we caught of the storms. So you can see Paul's got the leaf blower out because obviously there was a lot of downed leaves all over the property. Is that, are those cucumelons? Yeah. So if we look at, you can see the hail damage. I mean, the plants seemed, I mean, it's hard to know what's going to survive, but everything, we're kind of joking, like all the leaves look like Swiss cheese. The hail just came in and ripped through so much of the property, but we also have a lot of leaves everywhere. Oh, is that our first cucumelon? That's exciting. <laughs> There's some good news in there. Oh, I can see a few more. There's a few more to harvest. That's great. Um, but we have a lot of damage like this. And the leaves of the sweet potatoes also look like this. So that's the one crop that I'm really worried about. Look at my rhubarb. I mean, not that I need any more rhubarb, but it just got kind of demolished. And the sweet potatoes, you can sort of see them through there, but I'll have to get a better angle. Aren't looking so hot either. A lot of broken branches. Um, so that's really what we're dealing with today is figuring out what survived. But one of the main things that we have to do on our property is we deal with a lot of flooding. And I didn't get any video footage because we were just frantically working so hard um, to get the property pumped off. but. We actually, this is our submersible pump. This is not our first choice in terms of how to deal with this area that floods. So if I can get a good idea, basically this entire green area that I'm showing you right now was underwater. And we had purchased, we had um, kind of like an industrial, like a champion generator powered, yeah, like two inch pipe, like the big, because we've dealt with flooding here before. If you've been following me for a while, you know that we flood. That's just part of life on this property. So we're like, we're not going to mess around. We're going to get the big guns out. And wouldn't you know it, the first time we actually need the darn thing, it breaks. The rip cord just snapped right off. We heard a loud, it, it pumped off most of the water and then we heard this loud bang and then it just stopped working. <laughs> so we're now dealing with warranty stuff and everything because we're like, come on, 
Like we buy this to be prepared. Here we are, preparedness people. And um, yeah, uh, it just busts after its first use. But um, that was our main deal on Thursday when the rain was coming in because it was pouring into the garage as well. So it was vacuuming up that using the shop vac and then, uh, you know, pumping off the water on the property. But let's go take a look at the sweet potatoes and see how they did. So it's a lot of flattened plants, like the, and that's what my herb garden out front looks like too, just kind of looks flattened. Um, these were brand new beans that we had just planted. And I mean, there is some damage on them. Hopefully they'll bounce back. This is our second crop of beans because the first crop didn't do so well. They actually don't look too, too bad, but the sweet potatoes. I mean, I wish I had a before picture because this bed was lush and overflowing and amazing. And what we have are a lot of broken and ripped leaves. We just hope that there's enough um, leaf left that the plant can do its photosynthesis thing. The eggplants took quite a beating as well. A lot of snapped off branches. Um, or like leaves and then giant holes and things as well. So the question is, is the plant still gonna be able to produce fruit? We didn't actually, amazingly, look at that, there's an eggplant. We didn't actually lose any fruit. There's another eggplant tucked in back over here as well. So that is kind of a small miracle. Most of our zucchinis are dead. So all of our squashes did not fare well. Thankfully, we know farmers. <laughs> um, and like the trellises are on an angle, but it doesn't look like it's ripped any plants out. The carrots, we have to go through those too. And there's definitely some damage on our tomatoes. Like that whole branch there just snapped right off. And yeah, I mean, what can you do, right? So where did you get back from? I just came back from the chickens because I was really scared because the last time there was a big storm, one of them died of a heart attack. Yeah. A little chicken heart attack. Yeah. Were they all okay and safe? Yes. And That's good. And here's the beautiful part. A chicken I named Sora that let me pet her a long time ago, finally let me pet her again. I couldn't tell which one she was because back then she was all mangy and now she's not. Well, that's good. I'm just, I'm just really glad that was safe. Yeah, I'm glad that all our animals were safe. That's something that we're grateful for. Right? Malfoy was definitely nervous the rest of the night. He kept trying to sneak into the house. Oh, yeah. I, I oh, our good. first carrot. I accidentally pulled. accidentally pulled a carrot during the cleanup. That looks delicious. So, we're already noticing a lot of this. I'm trying to look at the bright side that I'll get to enjoy fried green tomatoes uh, But we have a lot of damage on the tomato plants. So right now we're just trying to go in see what survived and trellising up the rest So one of the things we're trying to figure out what to do is you can see behind me all of the asparagus because of the high winds that came ripping through here all of the asparagus ferns have just fallen on top of garden beds, blocking out sunlight for the crops that are in there. So now, I mean, everything that I know about asparagus and what I've, the reading I've done is that we can't really trim those. But if we don't trim them, then a lot of these beds that we've still have viable food in uh, won't get the sunlight they need. So it's trying to determine you know, how to navigate that. Here, I'll show you what I mean. So in this bed, the asparagus has completely fallen over top and we've reseeded this with beets and carrots and a couple of beets have started to come up. Ooh, you can see the shadow there. Just a few at this point. Oh, there we go, there's some more. And so all the ones at the back there, I can see them coming up. They're not gonna get any sun because of that, the asparagus. I mean, next year the plan is to do um, like wooden lattice all the way across the back, attach it to the garden bed, and then have that be like a wall to prop up the asparagus. But don't know what to do this year. We've already had 
um, one entire full wheelbarrow of damaged crops and leaves and we've only really done a couple of beds so yeah not a great situation okay rhubarb friends tell me will my plants survive it's so interesting because my we've kind of been cussing these plants a little bit because they're blocking off a lot of movement and flow in the garden and we had planned to move them oh, and it's just so sad seeing this let me know in the comments will they bounce back next year so a lot of what I did in here was just propping up the plants because the wind had come through so strong that the plants had just fallen down um, this batch of tomatoes seems to be faring better except over here you can tell not much survived but seems to be doing better than some of the other areas it's not a total loss but the big challenge is hun how much rain are we getting again on Monday between day and night 40 millimeters another 40 millimeters and we don't know if that's going to involve hail and all the crazy crap that we put up with here oh yeah you can see it there let's see if I can zoom in just a lot of like snapped limbs, which we just have to go in and clean up. All right, so we're pulling the row cover back to see how our cabbages fared. <gasps> oh my goodness. Dude, these are like the best cabbages we've ever grown. I like, covered them early. Yeah. Like, real early. Oh. Oh, they're looking happy. And they're pretty big already. Oh, yeah, you can probably are. harvest some of these. Mm, cabbage. Well, I think we can safely say that at least one plant's doing okay. After yeah, the, the cucumbers, these cucumbers here are doing okay. In the new beds that we put in, those steel ones, I've done a video on those. We do love the beds, but everything in there is pretty much dead, which is really sad and kind of depressing. So we're just going to shake the row cover off. And then put it back on because there are still cabbage moths and we definitely don't want to oh, risk. Over me. Yep. Whoa. Such a great cabbage harvest. We've been out here for quite a while now. Everybody's kind of spent. So we're going to head in. So final assessment. Um, I'd say we lost at least 25% of our tomatoes. Most of our winter squash, zucchini, um, and actual like slicing like cucumbers. Um, they were struggling in those beds anyway because they got hit hard. Brand new soil, brand new soil and we have vine borer. Tell me how that happens. Let me know in the comments. What the heck do we do about vine borer because it seems to have infested every bed that we have. But it also got hit with cucumber beetles and squash bugs so they were already hurting. The storm didn't help. Um, so they're all dead, all of them. All of the beans that were in there are also dead but we replanted so fingers crossed for a late bean harvest cabbages look amazing so they're okay carrots are okay we have a few melons coming in which we're excited about um and the sweet potatoes time will tell so we we took a hit we took a really big hit and it's it's going to be you know it, it's really only going to be time that tells us in terms of like how our eggplants are going to do compare like, there's no way to compare right from before the storm to after but we're doing the best that we can thankfully we know a lot of really good farmers um some in areas that didn't get hit by the hail and the storm which is good news for us because it means we can then support them so we've got places where we can get our winter squash from because they're all all dead all of them except a few acorn um, and i think we might get one or two delicata and that's it I haven't even been in the herb gardens yet. Things mostly look squished. <laughs> so more like they've been flattened. But uh, yeah, let me know if you've been dealing with extreme weather in your area. How are you handling it on your homestead? What are the plans that you're gonna put in place? This is something that we're gonna discuss and maybe I'll do um, kind of like a pantry chat with my husband about what are the future plans going forward because if we're going to keep dealing with these erratic weather patterns we haven't really had a lot of hot days so we're lacking in heat we're getting way too much rain um, we're getting these really devastating storms coming through so what are our plans how are we going to adapt to this because if we think it's not going to happen next year we're being naive so let me know what are you thinking on your homestead how are you going to future plan for shifting and changing weather patterns i want to hear it in the comments below 
And until next time, this is Corrine from Spirea Herbs wishing you health, wellness, and I hope happy gardening.